Judgment in Peel, Asset Land Investment PLC and the Financial Conduct Authority. Lord Carnworth will explain the decision of the court. The Financial Conduct Authority brought these proceedings against the appellants under the Financial Services and Markets Act 2000, alleging that they had been involved in promoting collective investment schemes without authorization as required by the Act. The appellants had acquired a number of areas of agricultural land identified by them as potential development sites. They had subdivided them into individual plots which were sold to investors in the hope of them realizing substantial profits if and when the sites were rezoned for residential development. Uh, none of the sites had in the event been rezoned. The High Court held in favor of the authority and the Court of Appeal upheld that decision. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses the appeal. Uh, the lead judgment is given by myself, supported by a concurring judgment by Lord Sumption, with both of which judgments the other members of the court agree. The reasons in brief are these. By section 235, collective investment schemes are defined as arrangements in respect of property which enabled participants to receive profits or income arising from the acquisition, holding, management, or disposal of the property. To fall within section 235, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, to fall within section 235, the participants in the scheme must not have day-to-day -day control over the management of the property, and the property must be managed as a whole by or on behalf of the operator of the scheme. The court holds that the relevant property for the purposes of the section was the whole of each development site. The judge had been entitled to find that the relevant management of the property consisted of the steps necessary to obtain rezoning and sale to a developer. He had also been entitled to find that under the arrangement, these activities were to be carried out by the appellants as promoters, and that it was no part of the arrangements that the investors should have any part in con or control over those activities. This position was not affected by the fact that each investor owned the legal, type to his, legal title to his individual plot outright, nor by the terms in the contractual documents, which did not reflect the reality of the understanding between the parties. In his concurring judgment, Lord Sumption reviews in more detail the policy background of the legislation and notes some of the criticisms made of its generality and lack of definition. He emphasizes the need for decisions to be firmly based on the language and purpose of the statute. He agrees, however, that on the facts of this case, the judge was entitled to find that the definition was satisfied, and in particular that the apparent dominion of the investors over their plots was in reality an illusion. <laughs>